Most RVs come with a converter for maintaining the batteries. The problem with converters is they don't charge as well as a three-stage charger. Also, they're not very reliable in most cases. Converters have a couple of significant issues. The first being static voltage. Batteries need a higher voltage to charge and a lower voltage to maintain. So converters that have a static output voltage, they maintain the batteries, but they don't really charge the batteries very well. I would recommend RVers to upgrade to an inverter charger because the inverter gives you the ability to feed certain loads 120 volts when you're not plugged into shore power or not running the generator. Plus, you get the benefit of a three-stage charger. The installation of an inverter charger in replacement of a converter is actually really simple and we'll go through a lot of the steps here today. Some kind of screwdriver with multiple bits and extensions. Wire strippers and wire cutters. Various screwdrivers, including a small one for the AC connections. A socket wrench. Oh. A razor knife and some method of strain relief. Plus, a heavy gauge crimper and ring terminals for the larger wire going from the battery to the inverter. Plus, a fuse to be located within 18 inches of the battery. Step one is we want to identify the circuit we want to invert. This 15 amp breaker runs the TVs, which is a circuit we want to invert. Up here, we have our power converter breaker. What we're going to do is combine them into a single 30 amp breaker to feed the inverter's input so that it can feed the battery charger and the TV circuits at the same time. Step two, we need to disable the breakers that we're going to use. So the 15 amp breaker is the TV, the 20 amp is the microwave. On the other leg, we have a 20 amp here that is the converter breaker. Um, and what we're going to do is we're gonna move the microwave to the converter breaker so that we can use this one breaker position for the 30 amp input, which will co cover the battery charging and the, the TV circuits. So let's move on that. Okay, so now this is my utility breaker and this is my microwave breaker. This is my TV breaker and then this is my converter feed. So I'm going to remove the TV breaker or remove the wire from the TV breaker. And this is what the inverter will feed, and we'll show that when we go inside the back panel. For the converter itself, since we won't need the converter, but it's still part of this body, we can simply disable it by removing the hot and the neutral wires. And they can just tuck back into the converter body If you have a deck mounted converter that's not part of the load center, one thing you can do is simply unplug it, cap off the DC screws, unmount it and, and take it out all the way out. Because this is part of my, um, part of my load center, I'm just gonna leave the board in there because it's not doing any harm just sitting there. If your converter is part of the load center, you can tuck the wires in like I've done here. If your converter is a deck mount or mounted to the floor, 
Usually it plugs into a receptacle. You can just unplug it, pull the DC cables out, cap them off, unmount it, and remove it from the, from the installation. Because mine is part of the load center and it's not doing any harm sitting there, I'm just gonna leave it there. Now that we've gotten to the back of the load center, we're gonna take the Romex that feeds the circuit we're going to invert, in this case the TV circuit, and we're gonna pull it out of the load center because that's going to attach to the AC output of the inverter. And then we're gonna run 10 gauge cable from a new 30 amp breaker in the load center to the AC input of the inverter. Now, under the bunk here, we have plenty of space to mount an inverter and, uh, and all the wiring we need. This is our old converter. This is the Romex that feeds our TV circuit. We're gonna pull this out of the load center and put it in the output of the inverter. And then we're gonna run a 10 gauge cable from that new 30 amp breaker to the AC input of the inverter so it can feed the charger and the TV circuits on the inverter's output. So this is the wire feeding the TV. We're gonna pull the neutral and the ground off of that same wire. And then we're gonna pull it out the back of the load center. It is helpful to put a screwdriver in here to open up the strain relief clamps on this type of load center. And we are just gonna pull out the Romex wire from the load center like that. And again, this is what's gonna go into the AC output of the inverter. Now we're gonna take the 10 gauge wire and feed it into the load center to be attached to the breaker, and then we'll cut it to length when it goes into the inverter. Ready? We're going to go ahead and strip off the neutral wire and the hot wire. We're going to attach the neutral wire to the same neutral wire that the TV circuit was on. ground wire will go to the same ground lug that the TV circuit was on. And then this will go to our new 30 amp breaker. Which can then be installed in the same position as that old 1520 split breaker. Tuck the wires inside. And now we're done with this part. We can put the cover back on. Okay, so to recap, we moved our 20 amp breaker from down here that was to the microwave up here. So this is our new microwave breaker. And the converter breaker, which was also 20 amp, we moved down here. Then we took that 15 and 20, the 15 for the TV, the 20 for the converter, and made it a single 30 amp feeding the, three ga or the 10 gauge wire back to the, in to the inverter's input, which will then charge the batteries and run the, the TV. Okay, so now we've got our 10 gauge wire for the AC input. We've got our 14 gauge wire for the AC output. We're gonna wire it into the AC wiring compartment in the inverter.
Now, this inverter uses these, these Wago terminals, which you can use with a, a small flathead screwdriver or a special tool. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the AC input, which is on this side. Okay, and these terminals are so easy to use. Just a screwdriver, insert the screwdriver until it bottoms out. Put the, the wire in and pull the screwdriver out. And now all three wires are locked into place. And then we'll want to use some kind of strain relief clamp. I really like using these plastic ones. You just clip over the wire. Now that this strain relief clamp is, is in, we can look at the AC output. So for the AC output, we have a couple of options. One option is to use the built-in breaker on the inverter's output, which is right in here. Now you can buy the GFCI kit and put it in there, but for future expansion, I'm actually going to wire the AC output from the raw AC output that's not protected by the breaker into a small load center. We're going to use a small load center like this from Square D Schneider Electric. It has, we're going to put a single 15 amp breaker in here. So we're going to run 10 gauge to the input of this because that's protected at 30 amps. Once we come into here and we're protected at 15 amps, then we can run the 14 gauge wire from this breaker to the output. The important thing to remember is that the, the wire needs to be protected by the right size breaker and whether you come directly off the inverter through a breaker that's built into the inverter or off of a separate load center with a sub panel, you just need to make sure that the wire is protected by the right size breaker upstream from it. So we're gonna do a 15 amp breaker for the TV with the option of installing a second breaker in here for the microwave uh, so that we can feed both the TV and the microwave off the inverter if we decide to do that. What I'm doing is I'm moving the transfer switch box so that I have a place to um, put my load center, load center, the, the sub panel load center for the TV circuits. So AC input, the AC output, neutral line ground, neutral line, or excuse me, AC input, AC output, neutral ground line, neutral ground line. This one is the one coming from the 30 amp breaker in the load center. This one is going to come out to the sub panel, feed the sub panel, and then it'll come out of the sub panel on that 15 amp breaker to feed the TV circuit. We've got the one breaker in, the other position will be reserved for when we decide to put the microwave on this circuit, if we decide to do that, but for right now this works as a single or a dual circuit uh, sub panel. Put the blank back in, and that part's done. Next step is to, is to install the DC cables uh, and provide DC to this, and then button it all up. We'll go to there. Now that we've got the AC input and the AC output wired, the AC output wired to that breaker panel, the next thing we need is the DC connection to the inverter. Now in the battery compartment, 
All we need to do is take the, the positive and negative from the batteries to, to, to the inverter. We do need to stop at a fuse first. Make sure the fuse is within 18 inches of the positive terminal of the battery. Now we've already got that mounted on the side where you can't see, and then it goes up through the floor into the inverter compartment, and let's take it from there. We've already pre-installed the DC wiring before we put the inverter in. Now, in the original intent, we were going to put in a 1,000 watt inverter, so we are using smaller cables than you would normally use for a 2,000 watt inverter. However, we are fusing it as if it's a 1,000 watt inverter, and we're loading it as if it's a 1,000 watt inverter, which is fine to do. But when we upgrade to the microwave, we are gonna have to run larger DC cable and put in the second breaker. So let's go in with that. To match the existing DC wiring, the black is positive, and that's why we've got the, the orange tape on it. White is negative. Here we have the positive lug and the negative lug. And then, don't forget the chassis ground. All right, now that the DC wires are, are installed, we can go ahead and mount it, button it all up. Before we mount it, let's go ahead and test it. The inverter's on, our battery voltage is 12 and a half volts. We have no load on it. Beep. 120 volt. Beep. Looks like we're in good shape. Now that we've got the DC connected and we've tested it, we know it's good to go, we're gonna put the cover back on it, mount it to the floor, and button it all back up. The last step is to install the remote. Now the remote comes with the, the phone cable that you'll need to install. I'm not gonna tell you how to route it, where to route it, that's going to vary with, with each individual unit, but plug one end into the inverter. Okay, plug the other end, after you've, you're done routing it, into the back of the remote. And the remote will mimic everything you see on the main screen, including AC, DC, and all of your settings and you're on off, and that'll turn the inverter off. If you do have to cut one end off in order to route it through smaller wires, simply make sure that on both ends, the tab is on the same side of the cable. So if the tab on the side you cut off is on the ribbed side or the flat side, make sure it's on the same side on the other end of the cable. Now that we've completed the installation, let's turn the breakers on and test it. We've already turned the breakers on. Push the power button, and you'll see the battery, and once you see the load turn on, just like that, we can test the load. We're gonna turn on our TV. And now our TV's on with the inverter. Now we can turn the inverter off and the TV will turn off. Now let's check and make sure it charges. Right. Now that it's charging, you can see we have AC that's bypassing to the load and we also are feeding the charger and we're charging the, the batteries. We're in bulk charge, the battery voltage is climbing. And that means everything's working. We've talked about the reasons for upgrading to an inverter charger from a converter. We've gone through the steps of how to install an inverter charger and how to disable or remove the old converter. We've gone through the testing and we've showed you the benefits of the inverter charger over the converter. 
If you're considering upgrades to your RV, I would strongly recommend you consider an inverter charger as one of your options. The benefit of having an inverter to use AC loads when not on shore and the three-stage charger that gives you longer battery life would be a definite upgrade to your RV.